Hi and welcome to Wrong Way and today we are going to review the Emotion V10F. So let me tell you more about it. Wrong way. First of all, also huge thanks to myewheel.com for providing me this wheel for testing purposes. And as usual, if you want to order a wheel in Europe, use my promo code WRONGWAY to save 5% off your purchase at myewheel. I also do receive a kickback from these orders, just so you know. Also a big thanks to you guys, because very soon we'll be reaching 30,000 30, subs. subs. OMG, that's a lot. And as I also mentioned earlier, there will be a scooter giveaway if we reach 30,000 subs before Boss Manad. And we're pretty close. So once we hit that number, I will let you guys know how this giveaway will work. So there is already a unboxing video and a disassembly video on the V10F, so you might check that out. In this review, I'll focus more about the performance of the wheel and its capabilities and its features and so on. If there's like some new is left out here just feel free to check these other videos out and another fact you might also not know is that the emotion v10 not the v10f the v10 was actually my first wheel the first wheel i've ever set foot on that's where my journey with electric unicycles began so thanks in motion for that back then the channel was still in polish and in the meantime we transitioned to english I did around 1500 kilometers on the V10, which I had before, and now around 170 kilometers on the V10F here. Okay, so now let's talk specs. The Emotion V10F has 80 cells inside, which are uh, LG HG2, I believe, and the pack capacity is 960 watt hours. The nominal motor power is 2000 watts, but it doesn't actually peak really high. It, it definitely has less power than Bigodi wheels. The weight is 19 kilograms, making it a pretty commuter friendly and light wheel. And naturally it's a 16 inch wheel with a two and a half inch tire, which I really, really like in this wheel. Definitely a lot more than the Tesla V2. Other features include the nice foot plates with uh, this rubber insert underneath that. The wheel is also really thin, really portable, and also has this trolley handle and you know lighting in the front rear bluetooth speakers etc etc but what does it mean in real life the top speed here is 40 kilometers an hour but usually probably you'll be lighting riding a bit less than that because it has two levels of tilt back basically the first tilt back you know when it slows you down lifts the pedals it's sort of just a small a tilt back reminding you that you're hit you're really close to the top speed and once you reach that top speed of 40 kilometers an hour it tilts you back a lot and tells you to slow down you can also turn off these alarms but you cannot turn off uh, the the tilt back you can t turn off the alarms in the emotion app um, but anyways i find that the maybe the sweet spot of riding on this wheel is around 30 35 kilometers an hour especially if you have a, a lower battery state it will uh, tilt you back quite noticeably so definitely in terms of performance uh, in terms of speed it's like not the speediest wheel you can get on the market but you know it, it sort of just does the job well it's it's i would say it's like a commuter just a correct wheel in terms of acceleration you can see a video now how it accelerates i really don't feel safe pushing more than that uh, the the pedals are just sort of wobbling. <laughs> They're just going up and down while it's accelerating. But let me try once more. See how it goes. 
Oh, I fe felt a really strong wobble. Yeah, it's, it doesn't feel safe at all. In terms of hill climbing, I did two tests in pretty, you know, cold weather conditions. One hill climb was 30 degrees steep and it handled it pretty nicely. I mean, maybe struggling a bit, but no alarms, nothing kicked in. And the other hill climb was 35 degrees where it started to tilt back really hard at the top. So I'd say, with a 75 kilogram heavy rider like me, I would say that 30 degree hill climbs are, are fine. And in usual conditions, you will, will not find this steep of an incline. But if you are a heavier rider, if you are living in a very hilly area, this wheel is prone to um, overheating or just limiting the power via software. I think it also never did uh, manage to pass overheat hill stress tests by, by Marty, electric unicycles channel. I think that in terms of just commuting, in terms of like what you need to get from A to B in a light package is like definitely more than enough. When it comes to range, I was actually pretty surprised um, to find out that it was just 40 kilometers. I mean, I mean, it was a winter, it's pretty cold, like zero to five degrees Celsius or 32 Fahrenheit to 38 Fahrenheit? I know, I'm learning Fahrenheit recently, just to get accommodated. Uh, the Tesla beat it like by, by a big margin, uh, which you'll find out in the Tesla uh, versus uh, Emotion V10F video coming soon. And I also had the V10 before and it actually averaged a pretty similar range. So naturally in the summer, if you ride slowly, you probably can get to 60, kilometers if you ride like really slow if you go even slower like 20 kilometers an hour maybe you know 50, uh, 65 but i would say that the average like with a usual riding style would be like anywhere between 40 and 50 kilometers and there are also some versions of the v10 which had actually a bigger battery installed and i think this is just why i didn't feel such a big difference of range between the v10 and the v10f probably enough for most cases but if you're looking to take part in group rides if you want to go bigger distances and explore somewhere i would definitely look into a electric unicycle that has a battery capacity over 1500 watt hours. One thing I also don't like that much about the V10F is the charger. It never was really upgraded. It's one and a half amps. So the charging time here is around seven to eight hours, which is really not fast. You can upgrade to a third party fast charger, but there isn't really like any solution out of the box or accessory by a motion to charge your wheel up faster. Cool thing though is that the charger is protected with a seal, I mean with this rubber flap, and there will be also no spark when you put the cable in. I also mentioned that in a teardown video because it's protected. Very nice in, in compared to, you know, we go to wheels. Uh, but a bummer is of course that you have to lift up the trolley handle to charge up the wheel. This is pretty much everything that you need to know about the performance in terms of acceleration and so on. When it comes to the ride and turning, I really like it. I mean, I really enjoy riding the, the V10F. This and a half inch tire really works well. I mean, I really like it and that's what Bigotti should have done with the Tesla V2, just make tire bigger. I rode also in different pressures and 30 PSI, 45 PSI, 35. I think 35, 30 is maybe the sweet spot for me, even 35 because it's like not as big of a tire as the 18 inch wheels. And the range isn't like that much of a difference. Both times I managed to do like 40 kilometers. Maybe I could do just one, two more, but not uh, um, not really much more. I love how nimble it is. I love how thin it is as well. It's really impressive how they made uh, a wheel so, you know, compact. It's maybe not like small by the footprint, but it's very, very thin. So it's very easy to put it somewhere to the side, to lean it against the wall. It, it's just so seamless to leave it somewhere leaning against uh, a wall. The turning radius is really small. Small, I find it also really nimble. Maybe it would be nice to have a bit more padding here on the top, especially if you have like O-shaped legs. Might be a bit difficult to hold on to the uh, V10F, but other than that, like, I really just like how it, how you turn on it. I, I like the stability and I actually didn't find 
any uh, issues with having the battery on top in ter terms of wobble and, and so on. Maybe you will have that at the beginning when you start riding, but after a bit of kilometers, I really didn't have any issues with that. When it comes to the foot plates, I was actually surprised that the grip tape holds on pretty nicely. There's also this rubber insert underneath, which feels weird if you have barefoot shoes, but if you have regular shoes, it's pretty normal. In terms of size, here I have the Nikola foot plate. Gotway Nikola is pretty much the same. In some spaces the V10 pedal is bigger, some spaces the Nikola pedal. And this is the Tesla V2 pedal, which is a uh, foot plate, which is much smaller. So I definitely prefer the uh, V10 foot plate here. But uh, the foot plate shape is actually very flat. Uh, I think it would be nice if it would be like more V-shaped like the Tesla or other, or actually just also the, the Emotion V8. Um, at the beginning, I thought that these pedals would be more comfortable, but it's just actually getting used to. So if you have V-shaped pedals like that, you will get used to that. Now that I ride the Sherman with V-shaped pedals, the Nilonova STAS, what Sherman XL, I got a bit uncomfortable on these at the uh, in the first like 20, 20 minutes of riding, but then I get used to it. So V-shaped pedals are definitely better for you know uh, turning for a smaller turning ratio and for holding onto the wheel better. So maybe in a future version of the V10F, I would like to see that as well. Uh, when it comes to waterproofing, I rode this wheel in pretty much every condition and the rain, in snow, and it's as clean as it can be. You saw it on, on, on the video. So I think that the IP rating on this, on this wheel is definitely well deserved and I think it's a well waterproofed wheel. Now let's talk a bit about the features. Get this wheel off the stand. If you're new to this channel, I'll blow your mind. Balcony flower planter. <laughs> uh, I really like the trolley handle. It's really high up. I'll just rip it off. But it wobbles a bit. So I also did some tricks where I put uh, my backpack on the side of the wheel and was just trolling the backpack with the groceries in a store. And it works well, but I just wish it was a, a little bit more firm. Uh, but yeah, it, it works really well in that, in that regard that it doesn't fall down and it's really tall. But it's also better to trolley the V10 around backwards. So this was, works better than, than this, just a pro tip. And then you just press the button and then you can lift it up. So I really also love the lift switch. It works really well, really quickly. It's really easy to just get the V10F up some stairs. And because it's also so thin, it's almost like carrying a luggage. There's like no issue with getting it up and down. I also love that the power button is right in the front of the handle. Really easy to turn on and off. You don't need to like somehow awkwardly hold it to turn it on. It's really easy. Uh, one thing I would change though is you need to long press to turn on the lights and a short press to turn on and off the wheel. Should be, should be our other way around. It comes to the light, I already showed it before, I think in the video, but it has a round beam. Could be, you know, cut off here, like on the V11, and definitely this beam isn't really that powerful. You will need an additional light, like for example, the Olight RN800, which I use for night, night rides. The tail light is pretty well visible and it's also a brake light so it flashes when you're braking. When it comes to the speakers, they're really mediocre quality. I wouldn't say they're really good. I actually was using a JBL Clip 3 instead of these speakers because they really sound quite um, quite mediocre on this wheel. If you don't have any other like Bluetooth speaker, then yes, this is pretty cool, but I, I'll be honest with you. Like before I was really hyped about speakers on wheels, but their quality is just not really that good. If Emotion comes up with the wheel, which will have like a JBL speaker inside or like Harman Kardon or something, then this might be interesting, but, but now, as I have my JBL Clip 3, I pretty much don't use speakers on wheels at all. Other features include the mudguard, which is quite minuscule, but works really well. Um, only thing is like in the rear, it sprays a bit to the back and you can get your back of your shoes a bit wet, but it's not that bad. Uh, but maybe, maybe in a future version, they could add like a flap here or something, but really just a small improvement. It's really not, uh, not major at all. So another feature I really like is the side lighting here on the 
on a V10, you can you know customize it to your heart's desire. There are different presets, and it's it's really awesome. Like you you can hate RGB, but it gives you additional visibility in the night, and I think it's just great. Now I have you know Boss Manati pink as my main you know color here, but you can set it to anything in your app. You can even like frame by frame de design your own LED patterns, which is like a lot of fun to play. You can also use the same patterns then on a in Motion V8. They're cross compatible. They're not that bright in uh, broad daylight, but in the night you can see it really well. And this is definitely a feature which is really welcome. And I would like to see on the new Emotion wheels. The new Bigotti RS has it, the Monster Pro. And I really don't understand why it wasn't present on the V11. I think it's a really, really awesome feature. In terms of app functionality, it's pretty much the, the same like you see on other wheels. You can also lock the wheel, uh, so you just leave it somewhere and then, uh, you know, somebody... I'll, I'll just show you how it works. Okay, just press lock. And now it's locked, so when I turn it off, it just doesn't ba balance and there's a alarm. Really cool feature. Now it's unlocked, I can use it. Really, really awesome. Actually, it's the first time I tried it out here because I usually just take the wheel inside with me, but it works actually surprisingly well. From uh, when it comes to other app features, you know, you can select your uh, top speed, you can select the tilt back, you know, all the usual stuff, but there's also a pretty nifty horizontal paddle adjustment. So you can set up your paddles like on the fly to how much degrees, how many degrees you want to have. Really cool, no calibration needed. You can also select two modes, which is off-roading and commuting. I usually take commuting because it's like the more responsive one. Uh, off-roading just, you know, wobbles the wheel around quite a bit. Um, I also really like the battery indicator here in the front. It's, it's five bars, but actually it's more indicators than just five bars because there's also once the battery goes down you have also like a yellow level a red level a blinking level and a nothing level so this is like seven or eight stages not just you know five bars this also shows you when you are uh, sending bluetooth data and remember if you want to send something to 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 the wheel or if you want to just uh, upgrade it just lay it on its side or keep holding the lift switch. Just a couple other side notes here and there. Um, the MOSFETs are really quite, uh, you know, not up to today's standards when it comes to wheels. It's uh, really a wheel that gets fatigued in performance quite quickly and you can overpower it and you can also burn the fuse, which I did uh, on the V10 already. It's just a 30 amp fuse and it's just like one fuse. So once you do a lot of, you know, hill climbing or a lot of acceleration or you're just a heavier rider and you have a low battery state, you can just burn the fuse, which is naturally better than, you know, uh, making a permanent damage on on the battery unit so it's good that there is a fuse but I think that's just the motherboard uh, and the fuse situation should be upgraded that there's more power reserve on this wheel because as said uh, I burned already pretty much every emotion wheel except for the V11 which I sort of purposely didn't want to do uh, so yeah, I think Emotion needs to up their game in the motherboard department and definitely the cooling here could be also better. Other small things like if you connect the charger to the wheel, then it's pretty cool that you can check how, what's the battery state in your phone. You, don't, you actually don't need to go and check the readout here. You can check it out on your phone. But the annoying part is that your phone also gets connected via Bluetooth. Uh, to the audio. So well, if you're watching a YouTube video on your iPhone and you turn on the charger here, then it will just suddenly uh, mash out everything through its uh, built-in speakers, which is like not, not optimal. But these are pretty small things. Um, well, maybe except for the motherboard thing. But I think all in all, this is a really good wheel. I think this is a wheel for a commuter, right? Um, and it's definitely a pretty good off-road wheel unless you do like crazy stuff like hill climbs or performance riding. If you just ride through the woods slowly or at regular speed without any, anything crazy, then it will just work really well. This is basically your suit and tie <laughs> or your suit for going uh, to work and back. I have a friend, Norbert, cheers. He has a V10F with I think seven or 8,000 kilometers on the clock. Uh, these wheels are really, really good if you treat them right 
and if you just don't do crazy stuff on them. You can go downstairs on it, but now I know better, I wouldn't really recommend it. It's just for pretty regular use, nothing crazy. So with that said, I think if you're still here, leave a like on the video, subscribe to see more content like this. I'll see you in the next video. See you soon.